Hello everyone, before we get into the true intro, I'm just making this little announcement because at the moment we're going through a stage of changing rendering settings to try to get the best quality video for everyone watching. Um, it's kind of important I mention it in this episode, we're going back to the old rendering settings. The reason is, it's an extremely dark episode as you can see right now, everything's quite grainy and black and white and not very nice, and the newer rendering settings aren't very kind to very dark scenes. So we're going to be using the old settings just for this video because a good 80% of it is in this kind of brightness. So, onwards. Greetings, sir and sirettes, and welcome to a little bit of chaos. Yes, welcome to the Snapjaw fighting the foul white flyers. So it turns out our lovely fleet of, um, airships are a little bit inefficient at keeping the borders safe and these two lovely fellows managed to get through. Why am I going towards the enemy? That's my question. Let's take a bit of manual control here. There we go. Well, I've lost the front of the snapjaw, but it seems like we're going to be just about victorious against what's left at least. Particularly with the pod still, of course, actively repairing us. We are sinking because we've had multiple hull breaches though. But I do believe, yeah, look at that, just the sheer number of shots, many of them explosive, many of them missing, I think, because it's counting the enemy as moving even though it was stuck. There we go. Oh, is that the main turret? The main turret is just about back. There we go, two damage, and it managed to succeed. Well done, Snapjaw. Just about, though. So now that insanity's over, let's get to the meat of the episode. Today, Sir and Sirettes, we are going to be focusing on Hull, which I will definitely be renaming, of course, but only when it's finished. I want a name which will be interesting and kind of, um, representative of its final form, which of course I haven't got a clue what that will be just yet. Now this may be a bit of a shorter episode, or at least an episode where a bit less gets done than usual, because this is the last recording I will be doing before going on holiday, yes indeed, to Germany, as outlined in my channel update, but I really wanted to play a little bit more from the depth. So I've currently, I've added the two side turrets, these, um, these repair bots are just here for now, just because I managed to, well I may have accidentally shot this turret in, in the back, because I'm just that good. So right now, we're making the front section of the command bridge, up here is going to be a little bit larger, so I'd imagine around about here will be the location of anywhere I want to sit, some, some, something perhaps a little bit more on the um, aesthetic side but not really functional, perhaps even a radar dish can be placed somewhere up here. But this location here-ish, as I'm just outlining here, will be used to house a stationary powerful front cannon, similar to what the Snapjaw has, but far more powerful. So let's get cracking with that then. Today of course then will be a bit of a build video with some fighting in between if the white flayers decide to come attack us. Actually, we could, if I just stop building, we could make a break for this. There is a resource zone somewhere in this area if I recall. Now. Let's move the floaty boaty up a little bit as we build, and we can have a quick check once that's finished. There's also a strength 10 just kind of hanging out there, which is a little bit odd, it must be said. So back to the hull. There we go. Of course, this is all still very much functional. I, ha I am yet to actually make a jet for here, but that will come soon. It'll probably be some very small um, jet-powered drone, similar to the Rot Fly, but more based around speed as well. When you go for ext extremely small flyers, you do have the bonus of being able to dodge a lot of stuff, including missiles, if you are just quick enough, which of course the Rot Fly simply isn't, as that was a very, very poor attempt at a first small vi uh, flyer. Where's the one I want? I want the... no, it's the... Is that... that's it, yeah, there we go, the diagonal, change that to green, and let's put this back on mirror mode so we can continue this. So because this will be a stationary turret, we do have the added benefit of being able to make it a little bit more beefy, as we don't have to consider it turning around. So even though it's quite small, we could actually have the components in this section underneath, not just on top, uh, where the actual firing mechanism will be, where the actual um, turret segment will be, the firing piece. There we go. I knew there was a word for that, I just couldn't remember it. 
back to regular. So yeah, like I was saying, I'm using the regular light blocks just to make it stand out a little bit more from its um, from the hull around it. Because I notice if you make it all look the exact same, it can look a little bit on the bizarre side. Okay, let's do that. Metal beam back. And continue like this. Plus, some people were asking me to do some more building on camera. Because, well, I try to cut out quite a lot of the building, but I do sometimes also tend to overdo it, like um, with the scythe being completely finished off camera, because once I start a project, I'm one of those people who just keeps on going with the project until it's finished. I rarely focus on other things until it is done. Hmm. I'm not quite... Ha I'm not that happy of how this suddenly goes up like that, but the only way we could change that... Ah, uh, yeah, I'm not happy with that at all, actually. So we have the triangle piece, then we should have the inverted piece here, like so. But then it still comes up really quickly like that, doesn't it? Not... Uh, it's not terrible, but I think I may smooth that off later and merge the two so it comes out to this point. Will I do that now, though? No, I, I, it, I, it's actually growing on me, to be honest. Plus, then it kind of separates where the turret piece will be from the rest of that. So, let's start work on the turret, then, itself. Well, here we are, somewhere a little bit unexpected. We are in the middle of a battle, but not any old battle. We're in a bit of a battle I will forever know as a huge mistake, and kind of a lesson in being a bit too overzealous to get something. So, you see in front of you, um, the remains of every single flyer I have, and this includes the now defeated Scythe. Yes, indeed. I went to attack the resource zone I saw earlier in the middle of the night because I tried to do all the off camera stuff at night time because in this game you can't have um, permanent daytime in the campaign, only in the um, vehicle creator, which I wish wasn't the case. And, so of course, recording was impossible because it was literally pitch black even on, in, on the battlefield. I'm guessing you were a little bit damaged. And I thought it'd be really easy. I thought it'd be lovely and simple. Let's go and fight the strength 20. I got ambushed by a strength 328, which happily took out the scythe. But the scythe actually did do really well. The torpedoes tore through about three of their large vehicles before finally being ended. The big thing which did counter us was one of the enemy ships, I'm not sure which one it was, but one of the white flyer ships, I wasn't aware of this, has a swarm missile system. So it shoots like ten at once, and they, I don't know if they have different AIs, but they all went for different things, and took out almost all of the escorts and the scythe in one really fell blow low, because they were all very small missiles that the anti-missile system simply couldn't deal with very well. So that is another lesson in that. But we are going to win, by the looks of it. The remaining, the remaining blights, or sight, or um, serpents, I keep on changing the name in my head all that darn time, they are called blights now, but they were called serpents, seem to be doing quite decently against what remains. The, the blights really do keep on beating my expectations, particularly with the um, repair tentacles. They, they do keep each other up a lot more than I thought, and they're a lot sturdier than they have any right to be for their low cost and honestly not being designed to be so. Fantastic. So how many enemy vehicles? So these are the last two enemy vehicles. Where am I? Where am I? That's a good question at the moment. We could try and jump on the enemy ship and capture it. Actually, I think I will. Let's jump off. I think we need to at this stage. We've lost almost all of our resource. At this stage, we are on a real back foot because we've lost the scythe. The scythe is worth like half a million uh, metal, which is quite a big deal, honestly. Oh, we need to get somewhere safe. We're going to stand in here. Let's stand. Oh, yeah. Let's stand on this wood. Let's stand on this little bit of metal here. I was going to say where the shots don't seem to be aiming, but apparently they are. There's a good chance our own blights are going to kill. No, blight! You crashed into each other, you ninnies! That's the first time this entire battle. Oh, you derps. Good job you can heal each other. At least crash into the enemy for good measure. Thank you. Uh, I will be changing the altitude of them, by the way, the, the next time I actually make a fleet. Because I wasn't intending to have a big battle here, so I didn't think about changing it. Hello. Where's this thing? Okay, I think I had this problem before. I don't know where the AI, the AI is. Also, I do know it's very dark right now on screen. Trust me, it's not the render. It's just how it is. I'm, I'm struggling to see anything myself. It's all black at this stage, honestly. That's an, a weapon controller. I'm at half health because I got hit by one of my own missiles. Oh, I think I saw something. 
No, that's explosive. Oh, what's that? It's a shield. Oh, where is your AI? I can't really risk going into the alternate mode to actually check because I might end up being blown up. I just need to be here until it gives up. I, I, I care the AI is destroyed. Where are the missiles hitting? Where are they going for? The middle all the time. Why the middle? Okay, I'll be right back because either we kill this thing or capture it. Either way, I'm just going to be standing here until then. Surprisingly, we actually managed to capture it. So the AI was here. So it is essentially near the middle. So I'm going to not repair this just yet. We're going to get any remaining blights out of the area now. And then we're going to go on the defensive. We've, we did get a lot, a lot of metal from that. Mostly because of how long the battle was though, honestly. That took about 15 minutes. So I will be going back to the hull now because I, because I have enough resources to continue my building. Oi, oi, oi. Hey guys, let, let's just separate out for a sec. So we have the the Charon, the Charon, whatever you want to call it. We're going to put this back as far as possible. We have the Scythe, where only one serpent actually survived. Um, we're going to move this way back because we need to repair this. And we have two serpents there. We had three. Oh my god, that was closer than I thought it was. We survived with only three of our flyers. Yeah, okay, we actually have to pay and repair this, particularly the Serpent Squadron, because that does better than the, the Blight Squadron. They are all called Blights. So let's just go ahead and repair these. Oh, all my, all, all my lovely metal going away. Wow, I might not even, even have enough metal to actually do this. Because, of course, repairing is more expensive than the initial build. Oh, just about. So, so we actually gain nothing. Although, although we did actually gain a resource node. And again, it is night time currently, so you're seeing the darkness of the map. Let's just go ahead and find where that resource node was that I just sacrificed my own type. There it is. There's the resource node, so I'm going to go ahead and actually capture this. Let, let's do this on camera. Let's get some revenge. Yes, I do want to fight them. In the name of the scythe, we demand retribution. Whoa, this thing can fire missiles. Did not realize that, but thankfully we fire a lot more missiles. The glorious blight fleet. That cannon's awesome. Can that fire upwards? Oh yeah, that's it. Just absolutely wrecked the damn thing. There we go. Just kill it. I don't care about capturing this one. Just destroy it. Victory! Oh, one last missile hit us. Darn it. And then caused us to crash. It was, that was all so smooth. And then that one got hit in the nose. Okay, so now we have access to this. Of course, we don't actually have any vehicles on standby able to um, go ahead and do that. So I'm going to have to make something cheap. How much does the Nurgle hook cost? Low constructible. The Nurgle hook, of course, being our starter vessel. Or even just the charnel. The charnel is um is capable of harvesting, just not very well. Far too much. How is charnel so expensive? That's about as expensive as as, as in Snapjaw, but nowhere near as good. Uh, Nuggle Hunt. sixty four thousand. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll save up sixty four thousand, then go ahead and make that. So all of you get back here because you're going to need to defend this area quite fervently. Just jump out, and I'll make that and then start the work on this. I do love this system of being able to repair using um, nearby f nearby forces, even if they're not in your group. It really does make the whole repairing out of camera better, so out of battle better. Um, they're really trying to make the experience outside of battles a lot smoother recently, I've noticed, and it really does show. Let's actually move this into the resource node, so when it's fully repaired it can start gaining us some more metal. I mean, that's what we lost all our lives and ships for, after all. Definitely a massive loss to us, though. That That's really put a setback. The Nurgle hut is almost finished, however, another attack has came from the White Flyers. Thankfully, our Serpent Legion, or now known as the Blight Legion, as soon as I bothered to rename all of them, since, well, the blueprint has been named, of course, 
has been repaired to intercept, so at least we have that. I would have used the charnel, but honestly, charnel tends not to survive anything ever, so let's use the one which is more guaranteed to actually survive a little bit. The rain is still heb- Ooh, it's a flyer! So it's a single one of their flyers and one- Oh no, it's a couple of enemy um on the ground as well, in the water, but look at that! Oh, the sheer number of missiles from that starting volley can be devastating. Well done, my little blight interceptors. You're doing your job well. Of course, now the problem is we're against ground uh, water <laughs> units. I can't help it. Can I call them ground units? They're lower than us, so they're ground, even if, obviously, it's on the water level. There we go. Perhaps I should just call them boats. When they don't crash into each other, it's a rather glorious sight, it must be said. When they do crash into each other, at least it can be partially hilarious. Well, that one's AI is dead, and they're done for. Fantastic. These, I'm really happy with these missiles as well. They just tend to do well. So, uh, someone was asking me what type of missile it was, and this is it. It's not anything fancy. It's probably one of the most simple missiles you can get. I'm actually considering losing the one turn and making the missiles only fire in front of them. But honestly, they do so well. It's just... It's really simple, just, it's just a fragment with a quite small comb, but not exactly tiny, so there's a higher chance of affecting important things. So that was rather good though, that was a very good fight there. Only such minor um, loss of health, who actually repaired during the battle. Is the Nurgle hut almost finished? Yes it is. Now I don't actually know how far built this Nurgle hut is, because I didn't really save it uh, for quite some time. So let's have a quick look, see, at what we've got then. We've got... The old um, pier is still there. We have the stuff to save vehicles on. Excellent. So we could easily save perhaps a blight or two on the back there. We do have the resource gatherers, of course, in here. All nice and well protected. Excellent. But we, we could add more, though, since we do have a lot of um, engine power spare. So let's go ahead and put some resource gatherers to shove them on the back just to make sure we're getting the resources we need this is turning from the build video I wanted into the battle video it really is but there we go gather everything I mean I could add more and more and more because the resource zones basically raise at the moment they raise their uh, how much they produce depending on how much you're taking from them this is obviously not intentional at least I don't think it's intentional it could be it could be but I don't like it so I don't go overboard too m oh lord what's this strength 19 a strength 105 you are kidding me a wrecking ball and something else quickly serpents return your master needs protecting once more that is honestly a terrifying sight. A lot of them lag from the degraded mode and stuff. There's a lot of entities currently loaded. So we have these guys, which make up the Wrecking Ball formation. Of course, these are all the Wrecker Flyers, and I don't want them to touch me, obviously, because they'll just outright kill me. Our, our lovely um, squadron is coming in, though, for the kill to actually help out. But I believe this one, which is really far ahead, so I need to look at my um, fleet and move them a little bit, is kind of being a hero here. Really far ahead. Not really taking much damage though, honestly. These don't do much damage at all, and not that many are actually hitting us. Damn, missile missed. Well, honestly, he's trying to fire at something that comes directly underneath it with them. Um, even with one turn missiles, that's going to be a real problem. So the rest of our guys are after that. I'm not going to force a prioritization on any. Oh god, I'm actually on this one, I didn't realise. That's not a good. That's not a good idea. I guess I'm repairing it then, so that's nice. Okay, oh, look at all of them swarming over that, though, at least. There's one enemy all the way over there, not really doing much either. Where's my ship gone again? It's going off... Okay, good, to, to him rejoin the group, that's fantastic. I'm not actually grabbing the missiles at most, I haven't fired in a while. No, it's fine. Who's it firing at, though? Where's the AI? Okay, we're going after these guys. That one ship's going way out of bounds. We actually turned our entire fleet around. Originally, we were facing, obviously, going this way. Oh, a couple of the missiles have hit the flyers, but not too many. Currently at a very stable 20 FPS. Always lovely. These things are inaccurate as hell. I mean, really awesome design. I have no idea how they stay afloat, but... They're not... Ooh, that one's... Oh, no, that one's actually going for it. 
Is that me? Please don't say that's mine. Can't see me on it, so... Oh, no, not quite. Yeah, the... Getting an airship's AI to actually be aggressive to ram something is almost impossible at the moment. I'm not saying it is impossible, just it's very, very difficult. Well, some of the missiles are hitting the target over there, which I'm slowly moving towards. Oh, AI dead! Yep, that one's been taken out from the sky because of that, I think, the one I'm actually in. So this was two or three groups of the, uh, of the white flyers. I must say, they're a little bit harder than I expected. I actually expected a bit of a... Um, a br to be able to simply breeze through them. But with their 150% speed growth, it's just the aggression of them. Even if I only lose one flyer every fight, I'm not really getting much resource back. And the cost of repairs and such, I'm not really winning... Oh god, those missiles aren't even fat. That thing's so quick! Wait, is that the... Oh, oh I know, it's, on, it's called the Umzealot, isn't it? Is that Zealot? Yeah, it's a Zealot. I'm slowly learning the names as well. We need its, uh, its propulsion to be taken out. It's so quick! It's such a quick vessel. Oh. Doesn't seem to be very happy now, though. That's definitely slowed down. It's doing a weird move. Sadly, we are going above it now, which is our weakest um, point of the attack run. If we can just get a few more hits on that back section. So I got a couple more of its um, thrusters. So I think that's how it moves. I think it uses actual thrusters as opposed to any um, propellers or anything. At least that's my belief. There we go. Yep, lots of damage being done there. I guess I Yeah, it definitely uses um, thrusters. Whoa, we've actually done a lot. Oh, lord, that's... Oh, that was close. That was ridiculously close. Yay for self-healing, I suppose. I mean, honestly, the healing capabilities of these things is really what's making them so good in such long battles. Being able to heal each other and have lots of repair bots themselves makes them very difficult to simply completely take out. They tend to stick around even when doomed to the bottom of the ocean. We need to repair the one we captured as well. That needs to become part of our fleet soon. Okay, this one seems to be, well, its movement seems to be heavily crippled now, so that should be going down soon. The other flyer there is being hit quite heavily as well. Which is good. I see balloons over there. I'm hoping that's not one of ours, but I think it might be. Yeah, it's one of ours. Oh, d oh, wow, look how I died. Oh, there goes one of our serpents. Goodbye. Okay, well, let's um, spawn, spawn on Blight. Too damaged, but he's being sustained by repairs for now. Let's just um, jump on one, one of the planes and continue to watch. Well, one of the enemy main ships was just taken out, which is a great thing to see. I think that's all, all that's left now is simply mopping up what does remain. So there's this one over here, there's an AI dead there currently destroyed. I think it's only these two wreckers and that one down there which are actually remaining in the fight. So well done Serpents actually pulling the victory out there. Well, one of the main ships just blew up horribly, which is a glorious thing to watch. So it's all that's left now is two of these wreckers and that ship down there. That's the one which actually killed the the scythe, it turns out. That's the one with the two missile silos. So I may very well see if we can capture that. I don't think I'll be able to because of how much damage is about to start hitting it. But um, we can see... Did one ship just bump me? Yeah, I, I jumped off one of my flyers and the other one bumped me. So we're going to try and land there and see if we can capture it. Oh my lord, did I just capture that wrecker? Wow, I captured a wrecker mid-air. That's... it may still self-destruct though, it's, as, it, as it still counts as being too damaged. I simply went past it and apparently that's where its hull used to be or something. And it counted as me capturing it because the AI was dead. Let's see if we can grab this thing. Oh yeah, so it has two missile silos and one huge gun there. It uses jet engines like a lot of the white flyer stuff does. And it has an issue of shooting itself. Ooh, look at that! Look at that seat though! Don't mind if I do. So it counts as a plane. What, what's this one called? It's the... Oh, it's the buzzsaw! Man, you've changed since I last saw you! I remember the buzzsaw from ages ago. Oh, captured! 
<laughs> Apparently captured. Well done. Well done, team. Oh, there's more enemies. Another fleet just spawned in. A saw shark, a saw shark, and a saw shark. Well, did I actually get the... Oh, sadly, the wrecker did self-destruct. Yeah, it's horrible when you see that you capture something and it's on two damage. Because there's almost nothing you can do. We do need to unsteal these vehicles, though. So I'm going to get off this. And Where is it? Oh, please don't say they're subs. Well, that one's AI dead, so thankfully our missiles can hit them. But, oh, look at that. That's why we're surviving right there. Wait, didn't you just say you were, you were AI dead? How are you still shooting, then? Probably wasn't you, probably another one. So this is a saw shark. I'm not going to get to this before it gets bl blew up, plus there are missiles heading towards it. That weird flashing effect. I think it's meant to be the, the lightning in the background, but what's happening is it's causing the whole screen to flicker. No, as soon as it goes to minus one, it's not going to start self-destructing. So getting there is going to be a pain. I could try to get my guys to stop targeting it, but honestly, at this stage, it's going to die from self-destruction before anything else. No! Come on! Oh, wow. They all drills? So I'll be oh, oh, we captured it. We did capture it, but... Oh, does that mean I'll get the resource? Yay! That means I'll get the resource. Well, that's okay then, I suppose. It's if I scrapped it. I call my missiles just hanging around. AI dead, AI dead. Well done, Blight Fighters. You've made your daddy proud. Because this is so dark, I may render this in the old style, which is a brighter render. Um, just to get... Yeah, that's all I'll do. So I'll probably just mention that at the start of the video. That I'm doing the old rendering style, just because we've had so many dark matches, and that's the best way to get it as bright as possible. Plus, people didn't use the mind that, so... Hello, ship. How you doing, buddy? <sighs> well. Well, well, well. Where's the ship we captured, then? Oh, did we, so we lost one serpent completely and lost a bit of health from other things. Here's the buzzsaw. Let's teleport on, onto that. Hello, buddy. <sighs> wow. Does that actually hit anything? What a gorgeous ship, though. Makes me feel very bad of my building skills. I do love the um, the um, style of the white flyers. Actually, if we pull all and put that nearby, oh, we did get the wrecker. It's just it, it doesn't need to be repaired. But if both of those ask for repairs and we get the um, the currently named serpents over near it, their repair tentacles will. Up oh no, <laughs> no more! <laughs> Stop attacking me! At least you're only a strength 40. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll just deal with this really quickly, then we'll get to repairing these two so we can actually see them a bit closer. Well, at least um, with them so few enemies that the lag is basically not here, so that's fantastic. Look at this in normal speed. It's a completely different experience. Of course, now it's slowed down because there's an explosion, but that's to be expected. Beautiful. I think, I, I think I've accidentally spawned one of my ships too low, because because the balloons activate straight away. I, I keep forgetting that if they are, if they spawn normally below a certain one, below a certain altitude, the, the balloons will of course spawn, even if they're not broken. Is that what he, is that AI I did again? It is! The buzzsaw seems to have a real problem with its, its AI simply being broken very quickly. If I jump on this one, I'll probably jump off and try and capture it. Oh no, I jumped off the wrong way! Jump back on! It, it, it's flinging me that way by default. It's not a choice I'm making, sadly. No, it's going to die before I get there. It's already on minus six. No. Damn you. Damn you, fighters. Is there any chance at all? Let me just have a quick look. See, it's probably dead already. Yeah, it's already gone. So what enemies are left? There's one enemy over here, which is too damaged, and... Already taken out. Oh, look at that. I love it. I absolutely love it. I adore having so many ships and so many planes at the moment. So, in the future, though, we do need to... When we have enough time, we're not constantly being attacked. We need to change their settings so their altitudes are different in um, different stances. So when they do their combat run, they don't go for the same altitude. And when they're doing cruising, they don't go for the same altitude. Because at the moment, they're at the exact same altitude at all times. Okay, fully healed. Let's have a quick look see at these two, then we'll end the episode. I did, oh no, not fully healed, why? I thought, oh, apparently they, apparently this one got its um, repair turned off. Probably because I spawned it to have a look at it. 
There we go, bus saw is fully healed, so it's normal speed. Let's load the wrecker. Max speed 31. Sorry, 61, not bad. Whee! Holy crap. That's insanity. Is it just complete thrust? Yeah, it's clearly just complete thrust and no lift. Basically, how the serpent works, actually, so... It was a couple of wings, but they're just there to, um, to alter bearing, I think. So there must be a lot of up and down thrust, and where's coming, where's that coming from? Is the question. Aha! No, they're, they're, they're barrels. They are definitely barrels. Hmm. I actually don't know how this thing pitches. And clearly, oh, there they are. Not as much as I, oh, honestly, not as much as I would have thought, so that's how it works, okay. So pull that, and then we have the buzzsaw. Hello, buzzsaw. With its actual buzzsaw finally loads in. I was thinking, you know, this is really weird, but there we go. So obviously that's a rammer as well, because everything in the in the White Flyers is a rammer. Okay, well, I'm afraid, though, I have actually run out of time because all the fights today. But I hope you've enjoyed the video. And of course, if you have, then likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. And please bear in mind again that this is being rendered in the regular old settings purely because of how how dark it's been. Um, the higher bitrate settings, which, um, which, which, which which enable things to be a lot smoother, tend to darken things. So it's just it's just a matter of me finding one I'm actually happy with. And I've there's like I've got like 20 different render options because I have two paid editing softwares and then, and then one free software which I use for various things, all with different codecs. So yeah, thank you again for watching and goodbye.